guys, it's Dana with Empower RV. And Brenda with Queen Bee RV. We are back at the Big Red Schoolhouse at the National RV Training Academy. And you will notice that there are classes going on yep. in the background. It's raining outside today, so we decided to take advantage and come inside the schoolhouse. Plus, we've got all kinds of props in here yep. that we can use. So thanks for bearing with us. We are going to be talking about propane today. When the women come to our workshops, this is one of their, their biggest fears. They're really, a lot of women don't even use their propane right. systems because they're so fearful of this. And we thought we have a whole class talking right. about all the safety features. Really empowers those women when yeah. they take that class. But we're gonna show you a couple things today about caring for and inspecting the tanks themselves. So why don't you start with the age? Okay. So when you have, um, when you're taking a look at your propane tank on your travel trailer, uh, or it's actually considered a cylinder, the mm -hmm, propane cylinder, mm -hmm. you want to know what, what kind of condition it is, how old it is. That's probably the most important thing. Just like our tires, our cylinders have a date of manufacture or born date. This one, it's going to be right here on the collar. And it actually, this one was 03 of 20. So this is a pretty new tank. So January, February, March of, of 2020. And these cylinders are certified by the Department of Transportation. They're, and they're regulated that through them. And they're good for 10 years. So right. this tank is gonna be good until 2030. And at that point, this tank is gonna have to go in and be reinspected. It's either gonna need to be re recertified for an additional five years, or it's gonna be taken out of commission because if it has some damage, some wear, some rust, things that would you know maybe jeopardize the, the integrity of the tank, it'll be taken out of commission. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at these tanks, if you're one of those people that takes your tank out and goes and exchanges it for a new tank, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the tank you're receiving in exchange is actually within certification. You're gonna check the date on it. If for some reason it's been recertified, it's good for five years. It will have a new stamp somewhere on this collar or possibly a sticker. Right. And that sticker will have the new certification date. So just one piece of information we've discovered that the women didn't know, and it's so important that you are exchanging tanks that are of equal value. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't want to get that tank that somebody brought in and tried to sneak in and, and then you get it, you end up with a, with a bad tank. Mm -hmm. Before I learned anything about propane, I thought every time propane was involved that there was probably going to be flame or an explosion. Mm -hmm. And that's what the women tell us quite a bit. And really the, the propane is, you know, contained here. Mm -hmm. And this process of removing the cylinders or tanks and taking them to get filled is very, very simple. And we're gonna go through the steps mm -hmm. now. So the first thing, we have some checklists that we go through in our classes. And one of the first things you're gonna do is turn off all of the appliances inside that are calling for propane. So that's like the furnace or the cooktop mm -hmm. or the water heater or even the refrigerator, the absorption refrigerator. Right. Turn off all the propane filled appliances, come out to the mm -hmm. tank. You're gonna uh, look at the service valve here and look at the arrow, arrows and turn it to the closed or off position. Mm -hmm. So that's righty tighty. So I'm ready to disconnect it from the rig. This is this connector here that goes to our regulator, which takes the propane lines, the propane in the lines back into the rig. It's connected by what we call a pigtail. It's this little, it's usually green, this little handle here. And I'm going to unscrew that. I heard it. And it gave a little, <laughs> and I can smell the additive mm -hmm. that's in there and that is normal. It is closed off for mm -hmm. sure. So we are going to disconnect this. Both of them are closed. The pigtail, that was funny. We're using a prop rig in the schoolhouse here right now. So, and you, you might gently lay that aside. You're going to take this off a storage platform. And this one, there's a dual system here and it's held down with this little bar and the wing nut. So go ahead and unscrew this and take the little securing bar, set the regulator mm -hmm. to the side, and then you'll lift the, the cylinder itself up out of here. And before we transport it, I almost always forget this. There's a little dust cap that you're going to cover the opening on the service valve Just with. Keep it nice and clean. Don't want any debris mm -hmm. or anything to get in there. And then we're going to transport it either in our truck. You can actually put it in your trunk, the back seat of your car, your SUV. But very important, DOT wants us to have these things upright, first of all, and we'll teach you why in our classes. You're going to keep them upright and they have to be secured in all, all directions. directions. Over the shoulder, around the middle, over the other shoulder. Right. Yep. So some people will just put them with one little bungee in the back of the truck or mm -hmm. just sit them in the floorboard of the car and that is not acceptable. It's, it's, there's a certain measurement that it yep. needs to be secured. And so one way to do it in the back seat of your car 
is, is the lap and safety belt. The the seat belt. And actually, if you put it in the middle, you can pull both sides of there the lap go. and safety there you belt. Go. Yeah. So you can use the seat belt. But another important tip: you're going to go straight, straight there <laughs> and straight home. Don't let it yeah. sit in your hot car. And then we'll get them refilled when you come back. Do everything in reverse. You're going to set it back on its platform, secure it, take the pigtail, <laughs> connect it again to the actual, whoops, take the dust cap off, connect the pigtail again, righty tighty, and then I'll be able to, I'll be ready to open the service mm -hmm. valve and use it again. So you had an experience on one of the campouts recently where a girl might not have gotten a connection. Right, so just as a little pro tip that we've given, um, that I've shared with some other ladies, when you are traveling, and if, especially if you're on those bumpy roads, and we seem to always hit those when we're pulling our camper, right? So when you're traveling and you get to your destination, when you're coming to turn on your propane, for whatever reason, whether it's shower or cooking or whatever, the first thing I've told my, my gals to do is just to make sure that that regulator is nice and tight. It can work itself a little bit loose. The just connections. Like, yeah, the connection. Mm -hmm. for the, I'm sorry, not the regular, but the little connection here, or the green one, the green connection pigtail. pigtail. You want to make sure that's nice and tight. Um, they can work themselves loose a little bit, and if in the most perfect of circumstances, you could get just a tiny little leak. And we had a, a woman who had the smell of propane. She thought she had a leak. Upon further investigation with all my tools and everything, I realized that it was just a very, very slight, just a tiny little crack in this right here. And that was, she had a window open inside her camper. She had the AC going, so it was just sucking it right up. And it was resolved by just tightening up that pigtail. So now you're gonna turn on, before you turn on your propane tank, you're gonna make sure that pigtail's tight every single time. Got it. So, so hopefully so, that was yeah. helpful. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. You, you learned a little something about propane. You know it's not as scary as it's made out to be. It's a great feature to have on campers. So if you like this content, give us a like. Follow us on our social media channels down below. Leave us a comment and see us next time on the next episode.